Hi guys, Steve here, and welcome back. This is my working factory. It makes everything I want at the moment, but it's not very optimised and it's very messy. So what I'm going to do is take all the factory equipment down, apart from the drills, build a nice flat foundation floor so I can align everything up, then rebuild the factory with what I think I'll need. It'll all be nice and neat and well optimised. Right, I've finished building my foundation. I've cleared everything out except the drills. This is where I'm going to have a main factory. Just put those walls in for placeholders at the moment. Quickly show you around. That's where I've kept everything what I've demolished. A nice wide flat area with loads of power. they're far away I've just left those for now. I've left a gap around this just in case I need to move it or if it, the foundation stopped replacing it. So let's get building. I'm gonna need to finish tier 3 quickly so I can have conveyor poles. Milestone reached. We encourage you to consider Those more things. verticality when it comes to factory logistics to streamline short range transportation. And it'll also give me faster conveyor belts. Right, okay, back onto it. Now I was going to show me building a factory, but a final thing took two days to get it how I wanted. On the first day I removed everything, built a foundation floor, then built rows of assemblers to make duplicate objects of what I thought I'd need at the end. The first row would feed into the second row, and that would make all my end tier products. And to feed those, I built rows of constructors, each making duplicate items. Like three rows making screws, three rows making iron rods, and six making iron plates. And I was going to link all those constructors up to the assemblers with conveyor belts. But the complexity of the conveyor belts became mind-blowingly complicated, so I scrapped everything I did on the first day, and decided to build one machine production line at a time. That went a lot better, so I'm now going to show you around my finish base, and show you how everything works. And this is my epic mega factory. It took quite a while to build. Right, we have one ore deposit here, that's been mined. Another ore drill there. We have two drills here. The one over there in the distance is copper. We have a limestone here making concrete. I wanted everything neat, so I got the iron from here going along this conveyor. That's Michelle's character look at the base and I wanted all the smelters to be aligned up now if you have a drill you can split it into three and then have that feeding three smelters now for some reason that drill isn't working as good as the others so I've had to turn one of the smelters off and disconnect it so from each of uh, ore drills, you have three, another three coming from that one, another three smelters coming from that ore, then the drill that is in the middle of here is a bit awkward. I've got the ore, I'll jump on it to show you, coming up here, around the side down and that being split into three here and that's all the ore smelters then we have a copper miner up here goes down there again split into three so remember for every drill you can have three smelters that's going into here so that's the smelting side of it now I'm going to come back to these constructors I'm going to show you what I built first. So starting in the top left of the base, that's all my infinite power that I showed you on a previous episode. 
We have an assembler here making modular frames. And we have another one making modular frames. And to feed that you need two more assemblers. One is making reinforced iron plates. Another one is. Then you need iron rods as a secondary resource. So that's being filled up and I'm importing that from somewhere else which I'll show you in a minute. So we've got those two making modular frames. These two are making reinforced iron plates but then again I've made a third one to do reinforced iron plates again and they are being stored here in case I need them to build conveyor belts or anything else. Now these are the module frames being stored in here. I'm not going to connect a conveyor belt from here into there at the moment because it's just easy to carry stuff and if I did do a conveyor belt then I'd have to empty a conveyor belt and swap it around and it's a pain in the butt at the moment. So that's reinforced plates. Then I built the machinery to load these. The screws uh, need to be fed quickly so I built a level 2 conveyor belt. That works well for those. Right, and then we have the feeding factory here. We have this makes the screws, converting the iron rods into screws. Now, I originally built the constructors side by side by side, but that makes it really wide and pushes it sideways so it's not aligned up. So, what I found out if you stagger it, so we have the screw constructor there, then the iron rods constructor here, then in the middle of it, I did the plate constructor. Then these basically line up and that feeds all the way in there. Otherwise everything would be pushed to the side and the conveyor belts would be curved into it, curved into it and it becomes messy. So a good tip is to do, if you have a screw constructor, do that one first then leave a the space build a next constructor to do the iron rods and then in the middle of that build a third constructor then everything can be aligned up so we have a conveyor belts coming from the smelters to here so that's one factory line building the modular iron frames then we have exactly the same thing again here the or ingots has been split off. This one's building plates, this one's building rods. And these rods are being converted into screws. And then we have a faster conveyor belt to take the screws into the assembler. And that's building reinforced iron plates. Then that again is being fed into here. That's making modular frames and that's been fed from here with iron rods. It was actually easier to get the rods uh, moved over this conveyor belt into here, split, than actually building another machine. You could have them going from the side coming in here, but it's easier doing that way. And then we have another assembler doing reinforced plates. So let's move back here. So the plates these machines are making at the moment is too much of a gap. So to boost those, I built another constructor that makes plates that goes in that feeds that one. And then another one to top that, the other two up. This metal comes in. Iron plates 
go over here. Then that gets split up into three. That splits goes into there, if it ever needed it. These two went into there. That feeds that top up plates. And then the bridge going across here feeds that one top up plates because I don't like the gap in between these. Now you could have done it with crystals to boost its production and faster conveyor belts but this is just the simplest easiest way to do it and when you've got infinite power you don't need to mess about with crystals you can just make extra machines. Right next these are the iron rods again we have the conveyor belts coming from here going into the constructor the iron rods go over here you only need one machine split it here and that feeds the assemblers it was a bit complicated working all this out to be honest <laughs> as you could tell but I should have a factory that makes everything I need right so that's the iron plates and modular frames going back to the smelters some of the machines work faster than others like these conveyor belts are going s uh, the ingots are being used up slower then the outer ones being used up slower but these are ones being used up really quickly that's why it's not a backlog so I originally had this one connected to there this one to this conveyor belt then this one but that split how much ore it was getting and it was a massive delay so I only had to use two smelters to feed the first two machines right, let's go on this side these are the leftover machines we're going to next right next I built this assembler for rotors. So you need screws, iron rods, again the iron rods get converted into screws, this builds the iron rods, this one builds iron rods as well, that's a pure production line going in, and these two are being fed by one conveyor belt. I don't really care about a backup. I could have done an offshoot off going in the container, but you'll see we've got plenty of spare anyway. And then a rotors go in here and a collector there. This is a limestone drill. I connected that with power at the moment. Why is that not drilling? Oh, because it's full up. So at the moment that's only on a short production line drill going in constructor making concrete and that going in there and then I can build an extra conveyor belt on there to take it wherever I want let's go over this side so again that one's building rotors Now, because we had so many smelters left over, on this side, I did the small production lines. So we have all these smelters. Metal's coming out here, converted into iron rods. And then these are just being stored in there in case I need them for anything else. Now we have one spare smelted down that side, one spare here, so I can run that off wherever I want. Metal's coming out of there.
because it's split into the three, if you have a machine that uses a lot of metal, then you don't have a waiting queue. But it does make it a bit short, like there's not enough ingots for it. So we've got rods here, plates going into there. This one's making more plates. And then we have the copper from the copper mine going into her being split into three. Copper ingots. That's been split into wire. And then the wire is being stored here. It's a bit tight this side. That's going into wire again. Then the wire's been converted into cable. And that's going over here. And that's been stored as cable. And I have a duplicate of that. Copper ingots being made into copper wire. And then the copper wire being made into cable. That's going all the way into there. All this is leftover storage. I've put the collecting points at this end for the main stuff like cable, cable, rotors, cement, reinforced iron, modular frames, and modular frames. So then I can have conveyor belts coming out of the end of these, then go into the next machinery whenever I need to build it. But for now, that's making all the different components I need. So I've tried to future proof it, even though I hate that term. There's more storage. lovely conveyor belt system so yeah that's my factory at the moment I'll build another tower so you can see it from different angles here's my beautiful base smoke from the smelters are kind of blocking it from there let's have a look around the other side This is as far as I've got with the game, so I'm converting this from a tutorial into a Let's Play series. That's my base from this side. A huge space elevator. I'll be able to fill that up quicker now. This side gives the best view of my base. Alright, that's what I've got to at the moment. I don't need any more power. Let me show you how many I've got. How much spare megavolts, megawatts. So I'm barely using halfway. And I've got more than enough of the stuff I need being built. So in the next episode I'm going to carry on playing and see what we can build next. If you found this video helpful please like and subscribe if you've not already and click the bell icon to get notified of when I upload next. There's links to other videos at the end. Comment on what you would like to see. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again. Goodbye.